all too often there'll be a mismatch between the people who are designing an intrusion detection system and the people that are actually tasked with implementing the intrusion detection system. You'll have people that are designing a system in a way that looks real efficient, but then you get to the field and it turns out that it's going to be more difficult than they anticipated and they have to uh, change the way, the, change their plan right in the middle. So that's why we're here. Support at Midchess. Mm -hmm. We can help you figure out which type of wiring um, configuration is going to be best for your application. We're here. We're ready to help. Just send it our way. The more information you can give us, the better. Mm -hmm. um, but so we're on the same page. The best thing to do is tell you all about the different types of wiring configurations that are available out there. I think there are three commonly used wiring configurations. The most commonly used, I think, is uh, the home run. So why don't you tell us about the home run? Okay. So for home run, you have your control panel, and then you have your sensor that's in the field, mm -hmm. and your sensor is just wired directly back to the control panel. There is the option if you have more than what is you're able to wire to the control panel, which would be eight, you would need an expansion module. Mm -hmm. And those, you're, you can um, put three of those in the enclosure with the control panel. Mm -hmm. um, but the general idea is every sensor is just wired directly back to the control panel, quick and easy. And this is the most commonly uh, used wiring configuration. This is the one we see the most because it's the easiest to lay out, it's the easiest to estimate, but sometimes it's not always the easiest to implement. If you have um, most of your sensors relatively close to the control panel, if you have your sensors uh, in a way where it's easy to get a wire from your sensor to your control panel, this is what you would commonly use. So it's, easy to design, it's easy to implement, there are the fewest accessories that you need to buy, but uh, you would have to physically buy more wire because every single sensor has to go back from uh, point A to point B. Uh, you might get some really long wires and sometimes it might be very difficult to run a wire from a sensor back to the control panel if there's no clear chase. So uh, when that happens, we like to talk about the hub and spoke uh, method. Okay, so for hub and spoke, you have a control panel, and then you would run your bus wire out to different expansion modules. So on different floors or in different parts of the building, mm -hmm. and from the expansion module, you go out to your sensors. So all of your sensors, will go backwards. All of your sensors are wired back to your expansion module, and then your expansion module is wired back to your control panel. Mm -hmm. So you would have, um, a, an expansion module or a group of expansion modules that that would be your hub and then you would have sensors and all those sensors would go back to the hub and that those would be your spokes so we like to use this when you have um, a physically large building or a physically large uh, facility to control but you have a high density of sensors like you said the most common application is a large building with lots of floors so you would have the control panel on one floor, and then you'd run a bus line from the control panel to uh, a hub on the second floor, and then you'd have uh, a wiring cabinet with your expansion modules, and then you would have spokes, all your sensors going back to that uh, hub. So we like to use this uh, for uh, applications where, like I said, with high density of sensors. So you can have much shorter wire runs. If you plan this correctly, you can have the shortest number of wire runs of any uh, wiring method. Similar to network topology, uh, you can easily isolate uh, a troubled wire. If, when you're troubleshooting, you can easily isolate a wire, isolate a uh, expansion module. But you can easily get in trouble if you don't document this. So you have to, everything has to be well documented. Um, it can be comp uh, complicated if you're doing a simple project and you do require a lot of very close project management. So um, if you aren't careful during the planning and installation phase, you're going to run into a lot of trouble uh, in the, once you actually get everything wired up. But that's great if you have a high density of sensors. If you have a low density of sensors, you'd want to use the protective loop method. Okay. So for a protective loop method or also an addressable system, which is a commonly used phrase for it, you're going to have your control panel that you're going to run your pop-ex to. That pop-ex is going to run to the first pop-it in the line. That pop-it is connected to your first sensor. 
You're gonna run that all the way around, daisy chain it all the way around. Your last sensor and your last poppet is going to be finished off the end of line resistor. Again, in your first poppet, it's gonna be run back into the pop X, pop X that is then run back into the control panel. Mm -hmm. So this is really the only practical way of protecting a very large space that has widely separated sensors, so low density of sensors like loading docks. For example, if you have a very large uh, commercial building with lots of loading docks, all your loading docks are going to be 30, 40 feet uh, from each other and you have 16 or 17 uh, loading docks uh, along a wall, this is really the only way of uh, wiring it. But unfortunately, a lot of technicians are unfamiliar with this concept. Uh, so, if you so you need to find somebody who knows how to wire this up. If you can't find anybody who knows how to wire the, these things up, you do have to um, make sure that we can send you the installation guide and we can help you look through the actual installation process. Uh, troubleshooting can also be a challenge because of the, just because of the length of the runs. Uh, you also have a problem if a pop it in the middle of the line goes out then uh, the subsequent poppets uh, won't be readable. So remember, contact us, support at midches.com. We can help you in the design phase. We can help you in the implementation phase. We can walk you through the accessories you're going to need to buy to get all these working. And we can uh, help you uh, troubleshoot. We're here to help.